All right, all right. Welcome to the Gamerhood, everyone. I actually remembered to turn on the mic, and the music was, you could hear the music, and tonight, it's Tuesday nights. Low Fantasy Gaming, y'all. Super excited. Oh, Bent Metal 69 followed the channel. Thanks, Bent Metal. Uh, anyway, so tonight is our The Lost Lake campaign, much like our last Low Fantasy Gaming campaign on here. We never actually reached... Oh, shit, the desktop audio is off. God damn it. No music. Sorry. TJ Dreader will be here next time, so disregard what I said about the music being on. Total lie. <laughs> All right. Oh, fuck this. Let's meet the people. <laughs> All right, you guys. Say something about yourself and your character. Uh, we, <laughs> Zach, why don't you go ahead? All right. Uh, I'm Zach. Playing uh, Sigil Helm, uh, mercenary from from the north, we'll say. Uh, I'm Vornari, 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 mercenary. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Arlen. Good to see you back, sir. Yeah, I'm back. Um, I'm playing Julian, who is also a mercenary, but he's not Vornari. He's uh, Argosin. Nice, good old Julian. All right, uh, Robert. Hey everybody, I'm Robert. I'm playing Emery, the rogue, also an Argosan, who has played the most sessions of all. That's exciting. What session is this for you? Five? Five. Nice. Yeah. All of them. You've been in all the sessions. I have. All right. All right. Next up, Elliot. Just kidding. He's not playing, but I put his picture there. Looks pretty legit if you guys are watching it on Twitch. All right, Taylor, you're up then. Yep, my name is Taylor. I am playing Shan, the Snake Tongue, a bard who cheated death in a previous episode and then missed an episode because his player was uh, out and discombobulated. But that's okay, because I picked myself a Terrapin Muhu. Uh, it's got mm. a picture of a ca turtle dressed up as a cow on it, so you know it's some good stuff. And I'm here to uh, LF up some G. Nice. That reminds me, do you guys think this feels like a low fantasy game to you? I think so. Yeah. Seems that way to me. Yeah, so yes. Zach, what do you think? Low fantasy or not really? Yeah, I like, haven't encountered any magic really other than I think uh, the priest has prayed over some people a time or two. Um, some mysterious obelisks, but you know, nobody's running around flinging light bolt, lightning bolts Ooh. yet. And... Um, Wait, yeah, let monsters. My, let me find my eraser for this session. I'll scratch off these lightning bolts. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, what did you think? Yep. Uh, so far, at least. And uh, I was sorry. I was I was a little distracted because I was trying to find the roll twenty um, uh, paintbrush. I was going to draw lightning bolts pointing oh, at nice. uh, Zach's character. <laughs> Arlen, you got any thoughts on that? Uh, I've only played one section, so. Mm -hmm. But you've played low fantasy gaming before. Maybe. Jury's still out on that. <laughs> I think we got some videos of Arlen in the Midlands. So anyway, uh, we'll also, I am going, I got the uh, hard copy, as I had mentioned. Uh, the author, Goblin Scribe, Brad Ullman, was going to send me this. I have two of them. One, we're going to give away on the channel. So between now and break, you guys figure out, Help me figure out what we should do to uh, give this out. I'll pay for shipping to send it to somebody. Uh, I think last time I gave away games, it was or books. It was like, uh, like we would say, you know, for the rest of this, I guess, three sessions or something. Every time you've been on the chat, you get a ticket, and then I'll roll randomly. You know, like so, if you got four tickets or one ticket, then you got an option. So I don't know if that's what you think would be a good idea or what. I could also maybe maybe Steve would send us a, another hard copy of the of the book to give away. I have one actually that I've never used. I only use the soft one. You know me, I like my things too messy. All right. Enough of all that. Let's move over to oh, maybe we should uh we were going to give you guys the opportunity to uh have a long rest. So Zach and Robert have already taken care of this. Uh, Taylor, how many sessions has your character been in? Oh, let's see. Is this your fourth? Uh, one, two, three. Yep, this will be my fourth. 
All right, so you're gonna go to you're gonna get all of your second level stuff. Oh, neat. Arlen, this is your second session, right? All right. Mm -hmm. Did you did you have any um, did you have any advances? You didn't get any special advances by telling a story or helping with the lore of the campaign or anything, right? Nothing like that. All right. So, but you still get one advance. So why don't we do an advance for you while uh, Taylor is furiously looking at the PDF to figure out how to level up his character? Um, see if I can find it. One ten. So to recap for those watching at home, um, usually in a game like a class game, at the when you go up a level, you get all of the class stuff. You get extra spells, you get more hit points, you get more abilities, you get more uses of those abilities. Well, what we're doing is is an advancement process that you can slowly get those piecemeal, uh, depending on how many advancements you get during the game. So. I'm not, it's almost, we're, we're sort of using sessions as XP, not killing monsters, not gaining treasure. So more like milestones, like uh, completing quests and uh, the number of sessions that your character plays in is how we're gaining experience, but we're giving it out pieces as we go. So basically I have a D10 table or a D8 table for non-casters. And if you roll something that you don't get, like at third level, your character should get a unique feature. If you roll that, you just don't get anything, even though it's just an opportunity for you to gain a portion of your level. So go ahead and roll a D8, Arlen. And while he's doing that, I have a question, Jason. Go ahead. So is this is this a technique that you use on regularly, or is this something that you're doing just for this LFG game, or what? In terms of the using like milestones, if you want to call it that, number of sessions. Um. I usually have done that with low fantasy gaming. Um, I, I don't know. I don't experience. Why with LFG? Because it has this advancement session advancement type of mechanic already. And, okay. and, and um, I don't know. I really like not having to try to worry about experience and worry. But in, at the same time now experience doesn't motivate the players like it's supposed to in other games. But I think some people would argue that the motivation that other systems give isn't that good, really. It's not bringing you the experience from the game that you want. So um, experience points as a motivation doesn't necessarily work in a lot of ways. Like some people would say gold pieces isn't the way or killing monsters isn't the way. So I don't know. Do you have some thoughts on it? No, I just, I know, uh, I don't know if you follow Yum DM at all, but he was talking about this, using this as his method. So he, he it's basically like he does one XP per session and then you level up at 10 XP. Oh, so every 10. So you have to do 10 sessions. Yeah. That's DCC too, almost, right? Except it's by yeah. uh, scene instead of session, but kind of a similar idea. Uh, I did this with the last one and I did it with Midlands, which is a West Marches open table game because I don't know, just dealing with experience isn't necessarily that fun. I don't, it's, it's kind of a tedium that I'm not into. I don't even like doing it with my own and I'm, I'm in it for the, the story, the emergent story that's created. Um, even when I play, I don't necessarily care if my character advances uh, but a lot of players do, you know, they like that in there. And the last time we did this for uh, Chronicle of the Cursed Axe, they felt like the, we went too fast because it was like every three sessions. And then we moved it to every four because, I mean, they didn't even have enough time to do all the use all their character stuff. And it was already time to go up a level. That's kind of why I tried to slow it down for this a little bit. Anyway, Arlen, what'd you get? I got five, which is a new skill, which I think I am only eligible for at fourth and eighth level. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, buddy. Um, when I talk about getting some advancements, there's uh, like in some of the random encounters, there's telling stories and things like that uh, that increase the lore of the campaign that the players are adding, either if it's backstory for their characters or something else that they're interested in. These are the type of things that I enjoy as a GM. So that's a way that I'm like trying to uh, entice players to do that sort of thing. So, all right. Anyway, there you go. Um, so long rest. Did you finish Taylor? Do you have any questions about uh, advancing your character? Did you roll your hit points? Yes. I had not rolled the hit points yet. I wasn't sure if I was... Uh, I think you said I should do 
just level two? Did, yeah. did I need to? Okay. Yeah, you're at every four sessions that you your character's in, you go up the next level right now. Mm, at least that's okay. what we were doing from first to second. Um, if all, gotcha. all if all I do is talk the whole time, we may want to you know make them longer. I don't I don't know. <laughs> and so I get D four. So you get a plus right now four. you get a attack bonus, so you should have an attack bonus plus one. And right now before you had a zero, so any time that you make an attack ranged or uh, melee, you get a plus one with now. Um, at second level, you get bardic knowledge, so add that in, and uh, you have a d4 plus four. Did you roll that? I rolled the d4. I got a four on it, so I added eight to my HPs. You don't have a con bonus. Uh, I do have a con bonus. I have added ten to my HPs. Nice. So now you are a, an official badass, <laughs> or at least half. All right. So I think now you're gonna have. Uh, two uses of your inspired greatness. Uh, your reroll pool should go up to two. Uh, your luck does not change. And I think that is it. All righty. All right. So that is that. So now we head over to the tabletop. Sound good? All right. So last we saw our characters... They were returning with the um, uh, the poison glands from the so-called snake to help save Urx. And that was a successful. And it was fortunate because someone else was poisoned as well. And they were also saved. Uh, that was Zach's character, Siegelheim, right? Uh, Correct. And we found out some interesting things. Like it wasn't just a plain old snake. It was actually... Uh, a giant two-headed snake that was lurking in uh, uh, some sort of tomb, it's believed. Uh, has anyone and ever... there were two of them. Yeah, there were two of these two-headed snakes. Is there anything anyone else wants to say to uh, help out Taylor and Arlen to let them know like, what our plans are or what's going on? Or... Uh, well, we know that who was Irx working with? chaplain thelman is that yep. right yep that's correct and we're still looking for them so we believe this is maybe where we can find them is in this tomb possibly so chaplain you found out that chaplain thelman uh was also with a one of the brazen shields who are the mercenary company working for uh lord venka uh and he was one of the more uh pious of the brazen shields. And so he was a good friend to um, chaplain Thelman. So it made sense that if anyone was going to be with the chaplain, it would be Eddard and Irx in his most annoying way, basically communicated that he was with him. And you do believe that uh, Eddard Thelman and Irx all went to the three pointed obelisks, uh, and for whatever reason, Irx did not continue on where Eddard and Thelman did. But you do not believe that he came down the hill. He only went up the hill where the three obelisks are, but did not come back down. Does that sound right? Who did? Thelman. Is that what you're saying? Right. Thelman and Eddard went up. All three of them right. went up, but only Irx came back down. Right. And there was also, you believe that it's hollow on top. Uh, I think someone ran across it. I can't believe if it was Launt or uh, Siegelhelm. No, one of you guys did. Do you remember that? I think it was Launt. Launt, okay. So you Siegelhelm believe... didn't make it very far up before he got bit by the snake and knocked out. Mm. So I think um, the plan was to try to understand more what's going on with this tomb, which I believe one of your characters was starting to decipher some of the inscriptions on uh, the obelisks uh, around the Mima mounds, as well as those on the, the tomb itself. And you've realized, you know, that those were some sort of protection glyphs. You remember all this or no? No. Uh, yeah, that was the, Eric. Also Lot. 
or it was that also uh, works. Yeah. 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 So I think that's our missing player, but um, yeah. yeah, yeah, he was working on it. Yeah, I'm some a... type of attempt to cleanse corruption. Yep. So I'm assuming Irx is going with you now. Is that correct? Or do you plan? Yeah, on we should. We should probably him bring him with us. Okay. Uh, not that guy. What? You don't wish me to come along? But why not? Is it because he sounds like an evil sorcerer? Yeah, he has to say, Barbarian! <laughs> what, uh, what are you drinking tonight, Zach? Uh, tonight it is Kokomon. I don't know what that is. It's another scotch. Oh, okay. Nice. Is this so, one as peaty as the last? Not quite, but it is. It's pretty peaty. I, uh, I like my uh, peaty. Yeah, I like the the peaty scotches. I had to buy. Well, I didn't have to, but we have this uh, kind of white elephant thing amongst uh, our family um, that we had to buy something that started with the letter of their name. My brother-in-law's name is Eric, and I know that he's, like, dabbling into, like, bourbon and scotch and such. So I had to find I, – well, I didn't have to, but we chose to find one starting with an E. So you got anything that comes to mind? Uh, Elijah Craig, if you want to go with bourbon. That's or, what we got. Uh, I was going to say Aaron for uh, Irish whiskey. Nice. Elijah Craig is what we got. So Nice. Perfect. That, that's so funny to do. Why that elephant warms my heart, sir? I don't. I'm curious what anyone who has no idea of the things I like to do would get a guy starting with J. Junk, I'm, I'm assuming, but I don't. I don't know for sure. All right, so um, I think we are on our way back into. Uh, the Mima Mounds, and I will I will go over those again because I think Arlen and Taylor don't necessarily know what I'm talking about when I mention. I think you guys started into them, and that's where you ran into the Vomitors. You guys were both there for that session, right? Yep. I remember the Vomitors. Okay. Do we have any access to supplies back at base camp? Nope. You have what you have. Okay. Are you running out? Well, if we're going to be running in vomitors again, I'd like to come up with something for vinegar so that we don't uh, get into another one of your golden shower things. Yeah, we. I think we could do without that sort of a sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we need a reenactment of that particular thing. <laughs> oh, I was just about to see what was going on, but. Uh... I, I got a message, but it was Nola Burt was mentioning on the Gaming and BS Discord that we were playing. Good work, sir. Good Yeah, I'm promoting. Work. Look Good at me promoting. Work. Good work. I think you're... I think My character you're, survives this session. So. <laughs> Maybe an advancement. <laughs> Maybe an advancement possibility there. I think Zach's buddy is here again today. Who's that? Nope, that was your two. That was your promotion, too, from that magazine. That's what it was. Jody Micellium. Yep. Or uh, mycelium. Mycelium. Son of a biscuit. Misspelled. Misset it. All right. So let's get this show on the road. Um, do you guys want to, is there anything you guys want to talk about or you just want to head into the mounds right now or what's what, like what's your marching order? I guess that's, that sounds like something that we should talk about. Well, first I'd, I'd ask Irks, what do you know about the, What's beneath these obelisks? What was Thelman looking for? The old fool only wished to understand the mystery that these obelisks made. The, the whole unnatural area seemed to be full of them. Well, we can confirm that. He, he mentioned sensing some sort of evil or corruption. But, eh, what does an old scribe know of such things? Any chance there might be some type of grimoire hidden beneath this, these obelisks? Uh, 
that obviously raises his eyebrow because in the in the Midlands, uh, unless you're a sanctioned sorcerer from the Stargazer himself, um, it's looked down upon in some cultures and downright uh, eradicated in others the use of magic. Grimoires? Who seeks such things anyway? <laughs> Fellman mentioned something of a tomb, some sort of sorcerer being banished from the soon. The soon being a uh, culture from the second age. We're in the fourth age of the Midlands right now. Uh, the third age ended with the eruption of the great volcano uh, Rokan, Mount Rokan. Did he think this sorcerer had anything to do with these obelisks? I don't know. He, he kept going on about it. I, I was stuck with him and Eddard. The man smelled. I, I don't know what you expect of me. I've learned my best. Perhaps if, if I could see something, I might, I might be able to use my knowledge of the past or the divine scriptures and he ferret out some information but I was just bitten by a poisonous snake man what uh, I don't like know to reiterate that the snake wasn't poisonous it was venomous venomous is what I said you fool <laughs> sword wielder <laughs> I don't know I've never eaten one so <laughs> oh god <laughs> Um, I'm okay. writing that down in my notes. <laughs> well, do we want to go investigate this weird tomb that's underneath the obelisks? Yes, we do. All right. Uh, I do believe that it is one to one of the things that uh, Launt certainly is want is interested in because his mentor, uh, Chaplain Fellman, is likely there. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we can give Erx a torch so that he can make himself useful. If anybody has, oh, I've got torches. I can give one of them to Erx. Okay. Yeah. So you have to make you have to journey back through. Uh, it's like an hour or two to the tomb or to the uh, the mound of the three obelisks. So I got to roll some random encounters and definitely make it worse, possibly, but. Uh, you guys want to like figure out a marching order, but in the meantime, I will definitely give Irk some light. When when we do go below, if we do so. So is Shan going to be in the front, or you want Julian in the front, I'm assuming? Shan probably belongs in the middle. With Irx or with... Uh, oh, and also, did you guys... Are, where are your hit points at for Shan and uh, Julian? Because we also got a long rest in there. So are you missing anything, like your some of your abilities, or like a reroll pool, or anything like that? I am back to 100% except that the DM took away my shield, so that still smarts a little bit. Um, and also, I only have 17 arrows for my bow, so better make them count. I would like to say that it wasn't the GM. It was a random table. But We know. should strap your arrows together and make a shield out of them. <laughs> mm. and, and actually, a, oh. a good question, question about that, since Want gave me his short sword, uh, uh, sorry, short bow, uh, I assume he gave me his arrows, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to use it last time. Yeah. But I never wrote down how many I have. So what should I estimate here? Roll would, a d20. Roll, roll a d20 with advantage, and that's how many arrows you have left. Nine. That's not very good. Hey, Trev Hart. Welcome to the chat, man. Welcome back, brother. Good to see you, sir. 
Okay, so I got nine, so that's good. And that's what you have left after uh, the fight with the two-headed snakes. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, so this is what we're going to do. All right, so you guys travel for a few hours through um, through these mounds that are like kind of a, almost like a tidal flat where these mounds come up in the grass. It seems arid, but it's also got like a, a, mo a mossy, loamy, maybe some sort of muck along the bottom of these. And there's these uh, pine trees. Uh, they look like pine trees, but they're small, blighted uh, bushes that seem to grow on the top of these mounds. And occasionally you find these obelisks that you've seen in the past, uh, uh, wind-worn, uh, making it so some sort of scriptures or some sort of uh, engravings on these obelisks are um, almost invisible that have been overwritten in some places with almost some sort of divine graffiti of the ancient seven of the Argosans, which uh, when questioned, Irks would say that, uh, irritatingly, he would reply that uh, Fellman uh, felt like he wanted to add uh, the power of the seven to these uh, obelisks for whatever they were trying to do. Uh, anybody got any questions about any of that or anything? No? Fantastic. Um don't think so. All right. So I have placed you on uh, um, basically the, the central area of the mounds. And so you can see there's some of these trees that I mentioned are these bushes all about. Here's actually one of the monuments that you see about every, they seem to be sporadic and placed, you know, uh, with little symmetry as you've traveled this way. Um, but there is one here and then up here on this mound, which almost seems perfectly symmetrical, unlike almost every other one that you've seen. And it's topped uh, with three obelisks. Well, let's go over and kill the snakes. Um, we left one of them alive but wounded. So we should uh, expect to have to deal with that. I think there's might be a possibility that they would be uh, snake would be averse to fire. So if we just go up there with some fire, could we scare it away? Most animals are it's worth a try. There, I can show you the other obelisk. That corpse just moved. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and you guys can spot the corpse from here. Uh, is there anything you guys want to do? Do you just want to walk up to it? What's the thought? I think like before, I would do something like I would uh, move up over to this mound again, have have the bow at, at the ready, and cover anybody who's going to get close. Through these mounds first. Yeah, I man, I definitely want to try to spot the snake that we know is there before we just go stumbling up it. And we, so, we somebody can get close enough and throw something onto the mound, and maybe that will make it emerge, and then we can just pick it off. Uh, I think you can go ahead and move your token over there if you want to. But I think Irx would rather uh, lurk here than go up to the mound. He certainly has memories of the two-headed snakes that he fears. And I turn to Irx, since he's right there by me on this mound, and I, I whisper to him and I say, if you're holding anything from us, you know anything more, 
Uh, I'll reintroduce you to those snakes. He rings his hands mysteriously. Oh, I, I do not know what you could be referring to. Good. Always tell us what you know. Of course, of course. Are we on a roughly equal height, this mountain, to this one? Like, can we see all the way to the far side of it? I think that one is a little taller. The one with the, okay. with the three obelisks on it. I take it there's no sign of uh, snakes up there? You do see the corpse that you had seen before. But not the one we've left. No. So I, I think that the other mounds that you've seen, you can see a couple of them on this down near the south uh, west, and then up to the where you just passed. Those those are about uh, eleven to twelve foot high, and you'd already uh, determined that uh, wherever the rock did not come from this area, it must have come somewhere else, either to the to the mountain to the south or somewhere else in the Surat, or even possibly beyond. And these obelisks, the three of them, are something else entirely. They're not even the same material as that. Also uh, quarried from a distant land. Hmm. Taylor, you're quiet. Any thoughts? I'm... I'm taking it in at the moment. I'm trying to think. Think sneaky thoughts. Mm, nice. Well, you should keep those to yourself then or they won't be sneaky anymore. <laughs> All right. So Emery's here with a bow. Um, if that other one is around, it, it hasn't come out of its uh, hidden recesses uh, at the southern. It was at the southernmost obelisk in the past. Shane, okay, so, and Julian, you guys want to go up there with me? See if we can stir it up. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So it is a bit of a rise, so it's not easy, easily climbed to get up there. I don't know if you remember that. You kind of have to use the grass or uh, it's a little athletic-y. So if you need to traverse it quickly, uh, it might require a roll. But if you aren't worried about quickly traversing it, then it's no problem. You'll just scamper up with, you know, half movement or something like that. Um, I'm not rushing, trying to be quiet, if anything. Take my time. Okay. So I'll work up, like, close to this obelisk where we fought the other snake. Yeah, you see it laying there, one of its heads chopped off. Um, and you can see, like like I said, kind of along its base around where the thatch had grown up around it. It seems like there are spaces that something could crawl down inside there that maybe it was living. And as before, uh, the glyphs uh, look similar on these, but they're not as worn. So whatever was keeping something was keeping the wind and uh, the ages that since they've been here from uh, wearing these glyphs down. So they're more readily available. And this is probably where Thelman and Irks and even Launt had a better idea of maybe what was going on. I will come up behind T Helm. I've got my sword in my right hand and then using the left hand on the, the ground yeah. in front of me, right? Go up slow. Okay. Uh, you guys can make a detection check for this scene. All of you guys can. Shan, you staying back? Um, not as far back, but not so maybe there ish. Okay. So I'm not I'm not hanging back totally. But so I'm you're going to be keeping... down in a dip, right? Because these are mounds right. on either side of you. Yep, I'm down. I'm down at the base of this one, so a little bit into the dip. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What did you guys get? Uh, Amory, you got the only success. I found my own feet. Nice job, Emory. Hey, uh, I'm the one that's that's paying most attention over here. I think they're scrambling up that side, so they're busy with that. All right. I think uh, you can see like something shifting around in the thatch near the base of that southernmost, but it doesn't seem like it's wanting to come out 
at this point. Perhaps licking its wounds. So I'll I will uh communicate that to Julian and Sigahelm. Kind of have to yell that, unfortunately, since it's a little bit distant, but I'll at least mention there's some movement over there, but it's not coming out. Well, do you guys want to join us up here, then? Sure. I turn to Irks. Stick to us. I'll go nowhere else. I'll see to that. So I'm just going to kind of move to the side and keep an eye on that southern obelisk so that if it starts to come up, I got my spear ready to launch. Uh, yeah, so all of you guys can kind of spot it there. Um, but that's it doesn't seem to be wanting to come out. Okay, so if we investigate this mound can we find an entrance searching around for whatever seems to indicate uh, so a way of like i mean uh, are you just searching around the mound itself are you searching around the obelisks what do you what exactly well i'm, I'm by this find? one uh off you know to the left so i will search the the base of this and see if there's anything around the base of the the obelisk first All right, so, I mean, you can see that this obelisk, it's pyramidal in shape, right? So it's got four sides that go to a point and then uh, that almost like um, a miniature size, maybe like of a, a yellowish or sandyish color of uh, the Washington Monument, basically, is how I picture it. But it's also uh, almost like uh, inscripted with uh, tribalish and uh, maybe hieroglyphic type images on it. Um, and with your detection that you had at the beginning of the, of the scene, you do spot that, um, on the, on the Eastern side, it seems like you can open a spot on the obelisk and there is a concealed chamber within. Excellent. Eastern spot, meaning the Eastern spot of this one right there. Yep. So you can see that these are about three to four feet at the base. So they're pretty big and they top 15 feet at the top of the point. Okay. I was going to ask that too. Do we recognize the script that the hieroglyph type is in? Uh, as in, could we recognize where uh, or what kind of peoples might have inscribed them? Um. Do you have some sort of uh, ancient lore or anything like that? I do not have a specific lore. Um, I do have the bardic knowledge, which is related to history, culture, or etiquette, but that would be the closest thing. I think that it came out that it's believed that these are from uh, the Soon, which is an a pro, uh, an empire that existed in uh, the second age. And mostly encompassed uh, the area of the, this jungle and like south of the trackless moors and maybe even towards an Odyssea. Um, Uh, you know, at the time they had more knowledge and better technology and they were known for uh, their knowledge of uh, wizardry and most certainly it was their downfall. Should be messing with that stuff. Do you make a roll or anything like that for that? Your bardic knowledge? Do you have a bardic knowledge skill? Um, or? It is a uh, advantage when rolling lower. All right, I so have I have general lower as a skill. Go ahead and go ahead and make that, and then we'll see what else we can decipher from this. Uh, 
So I have a failure, but not a bad failure. <laughs> I rolled I rolled twice because I don't know how to make it do the advantage. Yeah, there's just a drop down box. It'll say advantage. Oh, I see but, it now. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, I mean, you you can't decipher any of the script or anything like that. Uh, but you can go on what you'd heard Irx say that Thelman said and what Launt had said. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what are um, Julian and uh, Siegehelm doing while I believe Emery is involved uh, in messing with this chamber? Yes. Uh, I was just watching out for the snake, so, you know, covering our back. Are you guys trying to open the chamber? I'm assuming. Let's see what Arlen's character is doing. Arlen, are you doing anything? Um, I'm sort of uh, kind of gingerly walking around and every – couple steps i'll sort of take a a sort of thump with my foot to see if it feels like there's you know anything that shifts or like if there's a a sort of hollow noise underneath to see if i can find a you know like if there's a trap door or something buried beneath the earth uh i think as you move forward towards the central area between the three you definitely feel like uh there's a different sort of ground hardness like it feels different beneath the mm. thatch. Mm. Emery, are you going to open this chamber? I am going to see if there, it seems to be trapped. All right. What, uh, what's your check? Uh, do you want me to roll that? No, I'll roll it. Just, well, I don't know what I need. Uh, so I do have it as a skill for decks. Do you need to just know my dex? Yeah. 15. 15. So if you have it as a skill, that means it's a 16 or less. All right. All right. And you, as you're searching around, you you don't believe there's a trap. It just feels like you just kind of have to uh, uh, shift one of the glyphs moves a little bit, and then that'll open a hinge that'll open up the uh, uh, chamber in the obelisk. Before I do that, I turn to Urx and I said... Have you done this before, Erx? I have done nothing of the sort. Have you seen this move before? No, no, of course not. Oh, your your skill at uh, finding the obfuscated uh, is much greater than Edward's or Thelman's, and surely mine. I would not be involved in such underhanded deceit. Would you like to come over here and open this? No, of course not. Like I say, you seem to be an expert. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Seaghelm, so you can see that thing shifting around, but it seems to want no part of you guys. Okay. And you All said right. it's over on this side, right? Yep. Okay. So I will mention to everybody what I found, and I'll say, looks like this is our way in. I don't think it's trapped. Doesn't look like it from my Irk perspective sidles. here. Irk sidles away as you're talking, leaning down, looking at it at the base of this uh, thing and seems to be hiding behind Siegelhelm and Shand and the other obelisk. This thing shoots off some trap, Irx. <laughs> I tell you, I know nothing of the sort. So I, uh, you know, take a position on that side of the obelisk, but instead of having my spear ready to throw at the snake on the southern obelisk, I'm kind of turning it towards Urx. Oh, boy. He seems to be a wily intuitiveness, and he seems to be nervous and wringing his hands again, but he doesn't say anything. Kind of hunched over his gaunt form, almost doubled over, knobby knees visible. Below okay, so I, I've obviously stowed my bow, and I will I will make the attempt to try to move this uh, hieroglyph or whatever it needs to be moved, this stone or whatever, and open right. up. Yeah, so you just shift like that that uh, block in there, almost like a one of those puzzles where you can move the pieces of wood, but instead of wood, it's actually stone that you kind of have to shift over to a grating sound, and you can hear a click inside, and you can just open up the thing. So inside, 
as the sunlight moves in there, you can see that the inner chamber is, uh, it looks like it has a bowl on the bottom and then it goes up to like an orb on the top. So it's almost like an inner perfectly spherical chamber within once you open it in the bottom of it, it looks like it has some kind of viscous oil in the bowl and the top part is covered in different sorts of glyphs. Like the oil or the viscous liquid uh, in the bowl kind of has like a uh, silvery sheen to it. Not like mercury or anything like that, but more like, you know, uh, Guinness with uh, light kind of scintillating off of it a little bit. Sure. Okay. So is there a clear like uh, staircase or anything that leads down? No, this is inside the obelisk. All this is in the obelisk. So, and you said there was a chamber or not? It's just like an orb inside the four on, inside the obelisk itself. When you open the door, you can see this small orb shaped or, you know, with a convex top and concave bottom. Unless I did that backwards, whatever. No, I guess they'd both be concave. But depends on your perspective. <laughs> but it looks like it's filled with oil. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's the bottom of it on the bottom part. Not the whole thing is full, just the bottom part. So basically take a circle chamber and put it inside this obelisk at the bottom and that's what you've opened up into there's just like the small three foot diameter circular opening in there not even an opening just like a area and in the bottom of it there's some oil and in the top of it there's glyphs that you kind of almost have to look down to see up inside of it okay i call irks over and have him take a look at it is this familiar to you at all, Erx? No, no. They never opened this that I saw. What do you think this is? Mm. He takes a look back at uh, Sigahelm and Sigahelm menacing with his spear and then over at where the snake is where you guys are looking and he tries to uh, decipher what's going on. It, you guys are here for quite some time. Uh, the sun has risen and it's beating on you in this kind of arid area with this dead grass all around and kind of an ominous feeling of very few birds or anything else. And uh, there is sort of just kind of a sulfurous stench that seems to permeate uh, the area with a oh, horrific... Oh, sorry, guys. I'll take credit for that one. <laughs> <laughs> And, he's, and he basically says, it seems that uh, this is some sort of ritualistic oil uh, when properly used blesses the person and protects them from the wards beyond. And all we have to do, and he kind of reaches in and you, the whole obelisk kinds of shifts and where julian is you can actually feel something you jump back and the and the a circular area starts to down and it creates a spiral staircase leading down into the inner portion of the mound itself oh my did he take that out did he take out the oil no he can't it's just like it's like a bowl inside there and the oil is just laying in there did he touch the oil no, he just mentioned it. He touched something up inside the chamber, inside that obelisk. What did you touch, Erks? He goes, ah, this right here, the glyph. It seems like it was a similar thing maybe to what opened up the uh, the little door on the bottom of the obelisk. Okay. Uh, I will take my short sword and I will dip it into the oil, see what happens. All right, yeah, you kind of pull it out. It just kind of has a silvery sheen, and it drips off like you stuck it in some petroleum or something. Yeah, hey, don't waste it if you wish, if you th seek to use it. I, I uh, hearing that from Irx, I flick the oil off my blade onto him and see what happens. Oh, I, I don't intend to go down into this place. It's not for me. It's for whoever wishes to explore this tomb of Arif Osama the Sin Eater so 
So how do we apply it, Irks? Do we apply it to our forehead or something? Yes, on your forehead in the most blessed of manners. Uh, a reverse triangle. Well, Seahelm's always looking for some good luck. He'll, he'll just stick his thumb into the bowl and do that. What, like this? Barbarian! It, uh, hopefully it will do. <laughs> there you go. There's your barbarian. Yep. Glad to have it. And who is the Sin Eater? It seems he has created the scourge that uh, causes problems here in this area. Um, a truly evil man. Some sort of uh, ancient sorcerer, perhaps? Yeah. Yeah, these glyphs are difficult. If it wasn't for my in incredible and vast knowledge, intelligence, and wisdom, I certainly couldn't have even learned it this much. Now, I noticed you didn't tell us about Arafa Sama until just now. Oh, it was within this small chamber here that you un un unleashed there with your... You know, uh, ledger main. Thought your wisdom and knowledge was was vast. Yeah, but not infinite. Not infinite. Nearly so, perhaps. Okay. I'll take a little bit of that oil and do the same thing and put it on my my forehead. Okay. Kind of shakes his head like there's no way you're possibly doing it right, but he doesn't want to do it. What about Shand and Julian? Shand is feeling ballsy. He's going to skip the oil. Okay. Is the hollow orb big enough that I can stick my head in to dunk like the front of my forehead in the bowl? Sure. All right. I'm going to do that. All right. So he just, his hair is all slicked back now. Yep. Well, this way we're sort of covering all our bases, right? We got one guy with no oil, two guys with some oil, and me with a lot of oil, so. Yeah, does, does Irx croak out some sort of warning about that or anything? He starts to, but stops quickly, at, glancing at Siegehelm. <laughs> so, Irx, we're all going in, except you. You're going to be fine out here? Uh, do you think I should come in? Seems dangerous. Uh, a two. You should keep an eye on the snake. It was saucer. Yeah, here, orcs. I'll pull out my dagger and say, if you can kill the snake for us, then we'll, you know, probably take you out of the jungle with us, and I'll toss the dagger to him. So, do you guys want him to go to be a, a light bearer and maybe have knowledge, or do you want him to stay up? I want him to go. I'm just messing with. We him. could use the light bearer. Yeah. Okay, so you've convinced him that maybe it's not the best thing to stay up here where a two-headed venomous snake is. He's already been bit before. He kind of knows. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Does he, anoint, does he anoint himself with, oh, uh, with oil? That's a good question. I think he will, yes. Seems like a the thing to do. And just to be clear, Jason, I did do it in the uh, inverted triangle that he set. Okay. I sort of figured you had, but... There we go. All right. So I guess we are headed down, correct? I think so. Yes. Who wants to take... Uh... Uh, so you home. Well, take the lead uh, using my spear. I'm going to kind of test up these uh, stairs ahead of me. Do they seem fairly sturdy? Are yeah, they, dry? They, they seem to be made of stone. And there seems to be like when it came down, like uh, dirt and stuff that had been over the top of them and like the thatch and everything came down. So there's like clumps of the plant and the roots. And there's like some like weird looking worms of incandescent colors that might, you know, be native to these mounds. Um so it seems to you that it would be unlikely that this has been opened for quite some time. Okay. 
Uh, I'll proceed down it, just uh, you know, testing with my spear a step before I proceed down to each one. All right. I'm kind of testing the light here. That's what I'm trying to do. All right. I guess it's maybe it's working. We'll see. All right. And so I do have a, a lantern as well. Do you guys want me to to light that? Yes. And I have a shuttered lantern. Scary. Do we want to do that? Okay. So I'll light my lantern and pass that over to Irx. All right. So let's see if this is going to work. It should, but we shall see. What can y'all see? Anything? Mm, nothing. Darkness. So. Uh, no, no, square. square. Perfect. That's my test area. That way, if if everything was visible. Unless we entered into the oil, in which case mm. the light is going to work perfectly. <laughs> it'll it'll be brightly lit if we enter the oil with burning oil. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. be very brightly lit for just a couple rounds <laughs> can you guys still see it is still dark for me oh it is I dark can I, I can see how's that uh, Taylor I can see we are in a box okay there's nothing visible over here so the people on Twitch can't see anything. Oh, no. All right. I certainly have to fix something here, but I don't know what it is exactly. Let me see if I can do this. And should I be seeing something? Oh, yeah, you should. Should I reboot? Because I'm seeing nothing. No, let me make sure you have access. Okay. Oh, you don't. There's not a lot okay. to see at this point, but... Yep, I see that now. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. Let's see what I have to do. That help. This token is Which stream end. looks like it's frozen on my end. Well, it's just because you guys are off. Oh, okay. All right. Hmm. I don't know why it's doing that. That is weird. Because I don't know how this works. So the Twitch stream is back now, right? You just can't see anything on the thing. Man, how unfortunate. How unfortunate. All right, 8.59. It's 9 o'clock. Um, so everyone seems to have vision. weird very weird oh something flickered on the twitch stream. yeah that was me just that was just me uh okay. pinging all right i'm gonna move you guys too, over to a slightly different area it's too bad elliot's not here he seems to be a he master like been, at roll 20 he's been using it yeah i thought i was a master at it i just don't always know what the new uh, way of doing things is. All 
Let me see here if I can do this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What we may have to do is not watch the Twitch, but you can still interact on the Twitch. Just, like, open the chat room or something, and I'll just put my view up here. I'll, I think I can do that. I'll try it one more time. Oh, I think it's working now. I got it. Yeah, boy. There we go. All right. So basically, you travel down these stairs. And uh, do you guys want to redo your waters or go to the bathroom? Or are you good for now? I'm good. And so at least one. All right. So we'll go on for a little while longer and see what's happening. So uh, the stone were made out of something else. And you travel down. Uh, maybe 15, 20, maybe as many as 30 feet below the surface. And uh, it comes to a level space and then it starts to move forward. The chamber is only about, or the tunnel is only about five feet wide. Uh, and it's made of man-made stone. The floor is tiled stone of some sort, maybe like a thin sheet of stone that has been placed down and mortared in. Uh, and the top goes up to a, about eight feet high, and then it curves up into a slight point at the ceiling. Very shadowy up there, but with the lantern, you got no problems. I'll even give you a little more light here because you have a lantern instead of a torch. Yeah, and it's a shuttered lantern, so that means it can be like a like a hooded one. Is that right? Yep. You can like yep. Um, what is that up ahead I can see it looks like uh, I mean it looks like there might be some sort of, of uh, alcove uh, on the right hand side and, and right after right where you are Seagum it, the tunnel feels like it opens some okay well I'll start moving up I am going to Slowly. give you guys control of irks okay all right so as you move forward you can see that there are uh, it opens up to like a almost nearly 10 feet wide uh, similarly it still just kind of curves up to a point at the top and um, there are some niches in the walls of the uh, of the side here if you bring up Irk, Sugiyama will be able to see better. You guys will be able to see. All right. Yeah, I'm going to take a look in these alcoves. Uh, anything in them? Uh, let me find my spot here. Oh, let's... I We should retro. Um when you put your head in the oil, um, Julian, you felt like something kind of poke you. And actually, when he came up, embedded in your skull was a small, uh, un rough cut topaz, like in the bottom of it. And you stuffed your head in there, like sitting in the bottom of it. You found uh, it was invisible because of the darkness of the, the viscous oil was not translucent, right? But it seems like there were some gems in the bottom of it. Mm. <laughs> I actually wrote some things. So this is how good I am. I'm not used to writing things, and I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants most of the time. So do you think you would have felt around to see if there were any more in there? Or would you just take um, the one, or what would you do? Well, I would, I would feel the one on my forehead and be like, oh, that's weird, and pull it out and... They're like, hmm, that's weird. And put it in my pocket and say, okay, anybody who wants a gym can stick their head in. <laughs> so having heard that, uh, Emery would go over, I would go over and reach my hand in there and see if I can fish out one just with, 
you know, digging around in it. Lame. I don't really want my whole head immersed in oil. All right, including the one that uh, Julian put in his pocket, you find two other uh, rough cut topazes uh, in there. They're kind of obviously saturated uh, with this uh, viscous liquid, this blessed oil of the soon. Okay. I go over to Irks and I use his uh, cloak to clean them off and I stick them in my, my pocket. <sighs> All right. So the 10 foot cobbled highway, a hallway, you can see that it has cubicles on either side. Um, there's bits. And in terms of sound, I mean, we're, I assume we're trying to be really quiet here as best as we can, but we don't hear any sounds uh, coming or, you know, from. No, it seems like silence. Side. There might be like, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any sounds in here. And it, your own sounds kind of echo and like the sizzling of the, uh, of the lantern and the heavy breaths of irks. And uh, the sweat dripping off of his tonsure are, are pretty much the only sounds in the. <laughs> why the why does he have heavy breath when he's got sweat coming off his tonsure? Uh, he's uncomfortable. <laughs> his clammy hands sizzling on the uh, uh, on the outsides of this shuttered lantern. Okay, and then what does it smell like down here? Is it just stale air? Uh, cool. there is, there is the faint smell of blood. So, uh, like, did you look inside there? I thought you said Siegelm, you looked inside there. Make a, yes. uh, make a detection check. And Emmer, anyone who tried to closely examine the, uh, internals of these, uh, cubicles can go ahead and make a roll. A detection check. Or perception if you don't have detection. Ooh, even Shand looked at it. He's interested, I see. Erx is just holding the thing. Julian's lagging back, it looks like. All right, so as you can see that there are two cubicles on either side or niches, possibly burial niches here along here. But when you get down here, there's only one on each side. Um, and in these other ones, when you looked, they seemed like were the dust that had accumulated along here was broken by uh, like about a, a four inch line going across here. Uh, basically, anyone who was succeeded can tell, hey, these are pretty much uh, there's empty. There's nothing going on. But recently, within the past few weeks, it seems like these were all closed but have been opened by a sliding door that went up inside of it. Does that make sense? So like a sliding door, like a, yeah, just goes straight up like that. Yeah. yeah okay. Went up on okay. the, they were on the outside closing, but two of them are open down here, but it seems like evidence. Now Siegelhelm seeing these others is aware that these two blocked ones likely had sliding doors that go up that aren't open yet. Do you want to try to open them, guys? Sure. And then moving down here before we continue, since we've been stepping all around in here, uh, do we see any other signs of foot traffic in the dust? Uh, no. Um, no. Not in the last month. Or two, not in the last few weeks, but something has moved around here uh, around that time. Does anyone have want to make a survival check to see if they can kind of figure out the what it might be? Does it look like the wilderness somebody lore? Dragged? Wilderness lore. Wilderness lore is what it would be. Does it look like somebody like dragged a jump rope behind them as they were going? Um, no, it doesn't look like it like that. It looks like there might've been dust here for a very long time. And then something moved along here, but yeah. uh, you wouldn't say they were like booted feet. 
they almost look more like a mix of possibly like a little bit of dragging, but also like large chicken scratches or something. Hmm. So like a chicken with a lizard tail or something? Maybe. I think that's exactly what it was. <laughs> So I think we should make an attempt to open these up. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, the the closed ones. It seems like we could. Yep. At worst case, it's a uh, hat rack. So might so, as well. So there's more that you guys can see. Now, Sega Helm, you've moved up far enough. So uh, this area right here, it, ter it I mean, it terminates in double arches. All right. So there's an arch on either side. And past the arch, it looks like there's a, uh, a raised uh, dais. And uh, even from here, you can see there's some kind of scorched-looking corpse laying right here. And then it looks like some sort of battle took place where you can see, like, chipped bronze kopeshes and, uh, like, uh, skeletal bits and, like, a bronze helmet covering a skull uh, all along this area right in here. Okay. But sniffing Our, the air, this scorched corpse doesn't sound smell fresh. So, it smells like no. a while ago, right? Yep, it smells like a while ago. And okay. there are is the like, arches. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Are the arches pointed, or are they true like semicircles? Pointed, like the hallway. Mm -hmm. Like and these, are they golden? No, they are not golden. <laughs> you, you shall not find any uh, La Royale with cheese here. Uh, this burntish corpse like behind it you can see it looks like uh brownish stains along the bottom of the uh dais and kind of maybe up it a little bit so did you want to try and open this closed one emery still or yes what do you intend to do just like sits, you have like a crowbar or something you can put underneath it. Can okay, so which one are we talking of, about? Like right here? Uh, that one's open, but the one you're next to, you can right see. There. Yeah, you can okay. see that there's kind of, it looks like something just has it closed. Uh, Give me a second here. Let's see. Uh, Is there anything in my thieves tools that I can use? Oh, I'm sure there is something in there. I have three iron spikes, if that might help get it started. Well, I'll start with my thieves tools because it has flyers, uh, clamps, files. I'll take nice. one of the files and see if I can stick it in a groove between where the, the uh, door is and the, the stone and see if I can wedge it under there. Okay. So uh, what what's the rest of you guys doing while uh, he does it? I'm sure Emery at calls Irks over so you can have as much light as possible. Uh, yes. But what are Seagelm, Julian, and Shand doing? Seagelm's just going to stand close to Emery and uh, Irks. And we're ready to stab into the chamber if there's something in there. Okay, so you're focused, like the look of you're focused on the chamber. What about Shand and uh, um, Julian? Julian, Julian. Arnick? Mm hmm. <laughs> Shand is keeping an eye on the, uh, on the rear. Okay. I'm very curious. I'm very curious about the Bronze Age battle up here at the front, but in the short term, we'll see what's in this cubby. What Do you know of any epic poems that? might uh, inspire us at this time. Hmm. All of them. That's what I'd say. While you're thinking about that, Arlen, what, uh, what about Julian? What's he doing? Mm, that's the, I the will poem. do like, hmm? I'll do like Shand, except I'm watching this direction. Okay. Make sure nothing comes out of the darkness and tries to eat us. All right. Perfect. Or worse. All righty. Well, 
Wrong button. All right, with a little finagling, um, Emery causes the door to go open, and it kind of just like kind of shifts a little bit, and you can hear kind of a grating sound, and then it just like shh with the the old Star Trek sound as it shing opens up, and then the one that uh, between Julian and Erx on the eastern wall also opens up. That didn't work. There, that did. And inside are boom, boom. You see uh, two skeletal figures, one in each one, kind of cramped inside. And as soon as the door opens up kind of lunges out at, uh, at Emery. Emery, um, I think, why don't you make a, uh, you, well, if you, if you are make a success on your initiative roll, you won't be surprised. Okay. okay. And then we'll roll initiative normally. So you want me to roll initiative? Yep. So that's kind of what these guys look like. They still have bits of some sort of uh, bronzish looking ring mail. Definitely old, old looking stuff. And they have kopashes in there. But right now, no, there's no kopashes in their hands. But they just like start to reach out. All right, so you're not surprised. So everyone just go ahead and roll initiative. Just kind of like silent scream just with a rattle just kind of like puts out you know their clawed almost talon like hands all right it looks like shand is keeping up with his uh normal initiative capabilities glad to see that it looks like we don't have a die roller visible on the stream there we go all right just amateur hour at the gamerhood. It's always amateur hour at the gamerhood. It's like amateur amateur session, man. I don't know what you're saying. All right, that's so, what I'm saying. <laughs> it's exactly like, what I'm saying. Looks like uh, Julian has a great success. Why don't we uh, let him go ahead and see what he wants to do? All right, I will step over here and I'll try to smack this guy with my sword. All right, go for it, bro. All right. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Roll. There we go. What'd you get? Oh, shit. I got the Amber Alert. Um, oh, dang. <laughs> yeah. I hit AC 17 for 10 damage. Wow. What kind, what kind of car are you driving? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Nothing. One straight into the skeleton by the looks of it. All right, yeah, so you basically just go in there. It cleaves through what bits of uh, bronze armor that it has and just basically destroys uh, uh, the skeletal figure. Awesome. Does it have a shield that it didn't feel like using but that it left in its tomb? No. Damn it. <sighs> All right, somebody else can go. All right, anybody who has a uh, success go right i will try to spear this thing that's uh trying to get at uh emory okay hit ac 13 all righty six damage so you stab it in there and it just kind of rattles amongst its bones uh but seems uh ineffectual emory uh, can I do some type of fighting withdrawal? Yeah. So uh, anytime in LFG, if you move away, I I got I cleared this with Steve, so I understood it better. You can move away, and you get you can take a dodge action, and that gives uh, the opponent it basically gives you a plus two to your AC, but they still get an attack if you move away. Okay. Uh, I will. Let's see if I want to do that. I want to make sure that's right. I'm pretty sure. I couldn't remember. Not, it's not disadvantage. 
That's what I'm wondering is if it's disadvantage. It might be disadvantage. But... The regular dodge is disadvantage. I don't know if this is a special dodge. Oh, in this game? You mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, when... Disadvantage it is. Yep. Okay. Then I will attempt that, is that I will dodge and then try to move back here. All right, so it gropes at you as you flee, but does it does not affect you. All right, but that allows it to lumber out into the hallway. Irks. Eee! Squeals like a manly man. Let's see what attacks. One, two, three, four. Four cider. Uh, it looks like it uh, somehow sneaks past and um, like reaches out for Julian's back as perhaps some sort of vengeance to retaliate for its lost friend. Mm. Misses. Yeah, that's right. I killed your best buddy and now I'm going to kill you again. Take it, Biatch. Uh, Seagelm, though, can hear some sort of rattling, dragging. Coming from the south. I think Shand is it, uh, would like to try to pop the skeleton on his uh, initiative whenever that comes up. Okay. Ooh. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, it's their turn. Why didn't you? I did not realize there were more coming up the thing. No I thought that was foreboding. Problem. It also looks like something Shan can see passed down the hallway. It looks like there's something else that's a quadrupedal and like slinking low to the ground that just kind of edges into the uh, uh, lamplight. Now he can does do does the quadruped have chicken feet and a lizard tail? It definitely has a lizard tail, but now you realize that most likely when these doors opened, these other skeletons moved down the hall and their unbooted feet with the or looked like chicken feet kind of because it's just bones moving along on the ground. Not necessarily chicken feet, but bones. You see what I'm saying? Mm. You're like, what? Some of the toes must be missing perfectly. Anyway, it was a skeleton's moving down here, and it could have been this other yeah. creature as well. With I talons. think the quadruped ate him. Might the quadruped have. must have eaten the toes. Yeah, or there were chickens down here, and the quadruped ate the chickens. That's possible as well. Here, I can give you a look at this creature. He looks friendly. Yeah, we should tame this guy. He could be our buddy. Like an attack dog or something. And now's the time for Urx to unleash his lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Or so like a like a command animal or something like that. I don't know if that's <laughs> it. Yeah. That would be cool. Alrighty. So what uh what's Shan doing? We'll step up and pop this guy in the back. Pop him with a shaken up soda. You know it. All right, good. No, what are you using? Uh, my rapier. Okay. Hits AC 14 for four. Your rapier clatters as it a piercing rapier clatters amongst the bones, uh, seeming relatively mm. ineffectual. You definitely hit it, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Okay. All righty. Uh, is that everyone? So I think it is time for initiative. Did Erx go? No, he's, he doesn't fight. <laughs> well, he could, he could like dodge, right? Because that makes him harder to hit. Yeah, he can dodge. He looks like he's trying okay. not to get hit. All right. He's a non-combatant. So initiative from yep. you guys. 
Giving the old rope a dope, Burks. Oh, yeah. Shand, once again. Julian, looks like you... is. Was that from this turn or last turn? This is a new one. All right, good. So go ahead. All right, I will try to attack this guy with my sword now. All right, you turn on him. Uh-huh. And AC 20 for 7. It was a 17. All right, it looks like Julian once again wreaks havoc on one of these enemies. Shatters him into bone and bronze. Uh, I think we should just uh, backtrack and let Julian take care of all of them. Emery? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to use my short sword. That's what I would have had pulled out to defend myself as I was backing up and attack uh, this this one here. Ooh, I to see Hit that. AC 13 for three damage. All right. Yeah. You shatter uh, one of his shoulders. Still up, though. Uh, it's their turn, I'm assuming. Yep. I think so. One, two, three, four, five. Four. One, two, three, four. All right. That guy is still going after Julian. This creature takes a running leap past the skeleton and also tries to pounce on Julian. As these guys fill in with their bronze kopeshes. All right. Uh, uh, the first one will be uh, on Erx. The next one will be on Seaghelm. Sixteen on Erx. Oh, not Erx. I mean on uh, Julian. Sorry, Julian and Seaghelm. What's Julian's AC? Julian's AC is an 18. All right, that's a miss. What about Seaghelm? Uh, 14. 14, so that 15 will hit. Oh, six points on Seaghelm uh, from this one down here. Okay. This other one attacked. Uh, this pouncer attacks. Like the wolf lizard creature with the spines on his back. Does anyone recognize this picture at all? No. I recognize the skeleton ones. Oh. I recognize yes. the skeleton. All right. Three points of damage. Oh, wait. Did I roll to hit yet? No, I didn't roll to hit yet. That's what it'll be if he hits, though. Watch out. Oh, oh, that's a ten, not a not a d twenty. <laughs> what are you laughing about, man? I think it's a, a ten on a d twenty should be a two, really. Eighteen. So Julian takes three points of damage as this creature comes pouncing up and then uh, rakes him with one of his claws. Erg, I wanted to be friends. Oh, wait a second. It's not supposed to be a d6 anyway. It's a d4. Plus one. Oh, so it's actually five points of damage instead of three. <laughs> Arg, I wanted to be friends, and the DM keeps taking away more of my hit points. What an a-hole. I know. All righty. I think it's uh, those who failed initiative can go. And uh, Seacomb's going to try to stab the... Um... Wolf Lizard with the spear. Okay. All right. And this is where, as you focus on him now, and uh, Julian, you're aware as it kind of came up on you, it's wounded badly. It looks like it's been sliced many times with Kopesh's, and its eyes are milky white. Mm. That Seagull misses. Okay. Chant. Mm. I'm assuming my rapier has a pommel guard of some variety sure. uh, or a hand cage. Uh, noting that the 
bladed apparatus is less than effective. I'm going to try to smash the skull with the pommel guard. Nice. Go for it. Let's see. 19 for 8. Nice. This is the end of the round. Arlen said he's stepping away, so I think you shatter this skull and the rest of the skeleton goes down with it. Let's all take a... I could use a drink. I'm parched. All right, so let's come back in like a minute or so. And we'll just roll initiative. What's that? Decapitation. It's their weakness. That's right. <laughs> Your audio is still on. Do you want it on or off? Me? I didn't hear what you said. The uh, group had agreed to take a quick break. Or... Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> Our audio is on, so we are interacting with the stream, even though the, uh, the picture shows a blank room. Uh, that's just Hobbs, his camera. So I had to make sure to pipe up a bit because the streamers might think Hobbs's empty guitar is talking to them. It's a haunted guitar. In retrospect, I could probably grab some more water. I'll be right back. So last session, uh, Launt had his hand chopped off, or actually it got basically destroyed by one of the snakes. But um, I later learned that when you make a uh, roll the body, it's a con check, not a luck con check. So that's an interesting thing to know. And also, we are going to use a house rule that Steve said he would add to second edition low fantasy gaming if he ever wrote it. Because the short rest are kind of confusing, so what we're going to do is use this other this other process instead of having three checks available, they're just two checks every time, but you only get three short rests between long rests. Makes it a lot easier and kind of just averages it out. You can also get a, whatever your con modifier is. You can add those checks as well. Pool. Pool. Yeah, seems like it. So what do you think? It's break time. What do, what do you think about that uh, idea for the uh, giveaway? I don't, I don't remember what the idea for the giveaway was. So for... Um, we have this session, next session... And uh, maybe the next three, well, maybe just the next two weeks. So if I run Kalmata or any game that I run on the channel for the next two weeks, uh, maybe the first week, going into the first week of January, you'll get an entry into the, into, you know, the drawing. And then, but you have to make them, you have to say something in chat to be involved. So like right now during this session, we've pretty much only had 
you know, a couple things said in the chat. I will make a mark, and then if you, uh, that's how many tickets you'll have for the drawing, and then I'll roll at the end. So, like, if you're if you play it or you're here five times, you'll have five chances. Whereas if Taylor only is in one, then he only have one time in the, in the drawing. What are you laughing about? Taylor gets zero chances though, because he's a tool. <laughs> Total Geek the First, you said he had to say something in chat, and he typed something in chat. That made me happy. Mm, good. <laughs> so, uh, so, so far, we got one from uh, Cleric's Royal Ringmail, one from Trev, uh, Trevlin Hart, and one from Total Geek the First. Oh, yeah, sorry, uh, Mycelium. I am giving away the Class Toolkit Compendium for Low Fantasy Gaming. So the author sent me a free one, or he sent me two free ones, and I'm keeping one. But uh, I'm going to give away the other one here on the channel. So you definitely have one. Uh, keep coming to the channel and saying something, and you'll get an entry into the drawing. And we'll do it on what do we got. For whatever, I, anytime my channel's running. So we'll go from today until January 4th. At the end of the, that game, uh, during the high lows, we'll we'll draw. We'll I'll we'll roll dice or we'll pick a random. We'll just use probably the randomizer on roll twenty, and uh, we'll find out who wins the the prize. And maybe we'll have another drawing after that, and I'll get Steve to send me a book or maybe a low life or an LFG deluxe hardcover. We'll try to keep doing. Like I have a bunch of stuff I could probably give away that I don't ever use. What do I got up here today? Oh, you guys seen this before? Desert Moon of Karth. Never heard of that. You've heard of it, or you never have? I have not. So this is like a third-party adventure for Mothership. Oh, Jesus. Good thing I opened it. This is what was inside. My vaccine, my vaccination record card. <laughs> I might need that for a con sometime. Anyway, this is a pretty cool thing that I got. I might run this at BS or con. I don't know. I haven't decided. So anyway, uh, everyone is back. And um, to reiterate, drawing on the f Tuesday the 4th probably around 10 30 or 11 o'clock 10 30 is when we wrap this game up i think yeah, that's that's as long as taylor can actually stay awake it seems like so um with taylor on that <laughs> <laughs> no no need to be present to win but the more you're here the longer uh the more opportunity you have to win and we all want to win all right so let's see what happens in this fight um looks like we need a initiative rolls Sig Helm is slow tonight. Sig Helm's with a failure. All right, so what is Shand, or who wants to start? Any, you can go ahead and go first if you want, Julian, if that allows things to open up a little better. Uh, Sure. I will attack across and try to take down this guy nice. right here to open up some space for my buddies. AC 21 for 8. Ooh, an 18, not a 19, though. Just to, And also, uh, I should remind you guys that you do have those rescue exploits when people get hit and stuff that you could be possibly using to stop people from getting damage. I'm just going to delete these guys. That might make it easier. All right, uh, Shand. Oh, you can wait for... Um, Seek him to go, but then that would be after the other guys. Or you can go. Can now. Julian still move, though? He killed that one. He can if he wants, yeah. Um, let's see. Would I take an attack of opportunity for moving here from no. this guy? No. No? Okay, well, then I'll just move here. All right. Shan, do you want to do anything? Thank you. 
you're, you're muted, buddy. You're muted, bud. I muted myself in two places. <laughs> I've done that before. Some people oh, wish I'd do more. <laughs> Three, four places, Hobbs. <laughs> All the places. Mute this guy. All the places. Uh, so, e Emery, you were more of the ranger arch archetype, or I'm I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I do have a bow now. That okay. that was because of Launt. Launt gave that okay. to me. Hmm. So I can switch to my bow and stay back here and shoot around people. Okay. Yeah, because I have no... Uh, on the one hand, I have no way to be useful if I'm outside of here, uh, apart from inspiring uh, my allies. Uh, but on the other hand, that's a, that looks like a scary thing, and I don't know if I was... I was hoping you were like, man, I really like to melee. <laughs> you should, you know, kick back. No. Let's see. Shand will, given the opportunity, step up around Urx and take a pot shot at the... Uh, four-legged creature go for it oh that's a hit Ooh. Uh, these things seem pretty tough you're not quite sure if it's because it's ignoring the wounds mm -hmm. or what but you stab into it viscous purplish ichor oozes out slowly almost as if a beating heart doesn't beat in this unliving beast all right uh it's their turn oh oh i had a success oh go ahead so i am going to sheath my sword and take out my bow but i assume that uses my whole action right i think that's what we decided yeah Yes. Okay. And then I'll move over. Is that fine too for my yep. movement action? Yep. yep. Okay. For sure. And trying to get a better, you know, bead on, you know, shooting this way. So that's that'll be my action. I'll tell Irx to move back a little bit. All right. Yeah. You can move him. All right. Nice. So uh, now it's their turn, right? Yep. Oh. Uh, this creature did not like Shand. So it's going to attack Shand, and then Julian will get two attacks. So the first roll will be uh, on Shand. The other two will be on Julian. All right, five for Shand, 13, 11. No hits. So I think it is uh, Sieghelm's turn. Sieghelm continuing to stab at the lizard. Go for it. It's AC 16. That is a hit. Six damage. All right, and it's still up. Initiative. Seagelm, go ahead. You got a great success while these guys are rolling. I'm just going to strike again while I can. Nah. Oh, no sorry, my one. man. That's a miss. Julian, great success. Um, I will try to finish off this one. Go for it. Another skilly boy. No. Oh, miss. Emery. Yep. So I'm going to shoot with my bow at the uh, the lizard. All right. So you're firing into melee, right? I suppose. <laughs> so firing into melee in this game, I think if you miss... Uh, there's a 33% chance that it hits the opponent or it hits a person on your side. Okay. Well, we'll give it a shot. All right. Good. I love that. When using a ranged weapon to attack into a swirling melee, if you miss your intended target, there's a 33% chance you must reroll the attack against a random ally, if any, in the same melee. A target in melee generally counts as being half covered, gaining a plus two bonus to AC. All right, that hits but I anyway. hit AC 16. That hits anyway. And now there is Funk, an arrow embedded in this uh, uh, unliving creature. And right it's their the turn. Yeah, right through them. It's their turn now. So it looks like the same situation as before, although the lizard may attack someone else. Two, three, four. Oh, it attacks Seagelm. 
All right. So um, one, two, three. The lizard's last, and it got, got a one. So that means you get to counterattack, Sea Helm. Oh, cool. Uh, stab him. Miss. I'm not stabbing very well tonight. No though. kidding. Seagelm is not, this is not his uh, preferred area. He'd rather be in the shield wall in some major battle, apparently. I think so. All right. Shand. All right. I will continue the assault on the quadruped. And this. we'll not do so. <laughs> All right. Initiative round three, I think. Round four, really, in many ways. Great success, Seagum. At least you're quick. Go for it. Uh, you know, I've been kind of unlucky with the spear, so I'm going to quickly use my uh, once per, uh, per fight. I can switch weapons and switch to the axe to try to chop this thing in the head. Are you talking about adaptable? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, are you changing styles? That's what it's for. You can change weapons Switch anyway. Switch right? weapon and style at no cost. So that okay. Nice. Fight. Go for it. Yeah. No better luck with the axe. No better luck. All right. So why don't you thread the needle again, Emery, if you'd like? I'll give it a shot. Unless someone else wants to go. You guys can choose what order you go in. It seems to me that everyone just kind of sits there if I don't say go. Right. I'll let uh, other people go first. See what's left. All right. Uh, All right. I'll go. Nice. Yeah. Go for it. So, um, because uh, Sieg Helm was kind enough to remind me, I realized that I'm on the protector stance, which gives me a bonus to using my shield even though I have no shield. So I'm going to use my adaptable to switch to opportunist, which nice. means if I kill this guy, I get to make an attack on this guy. So Smart. let's see. Do, 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 do. Nice. That indeed destroys him. Make another attack. All right. Ooh, a Whoa. critical, which means you do, oh, it's a 19, so you get criticals on that. So if there's a special critical for longsword as well, but I don't think we need to dig deep into that hole because you destroy him. Nice. Both of them. Julian Bone Slayer. That's right. As you're well aware, he also destroys humans. Uh, Shant. I'm going to uh, <laughs> look puny as it may be. All right. You, uh, actually, what happens when Shan finishes off this last unliving creature? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. What I'm seeing is uh, I'm thinking Julian came down with a, a huge broad stroke cut through both skeletons in a single blow, shattering them as they exploded onto the floor, ending in an epic pose. And then Shan pokes the quadruped which then stumbles backward onto julian's sword <laughs> nice and there it no longer breathes again again <laughs> twice all right and silence once more reigns other than the sweat from Urx's tonsure yeah emory i'm i go so what do you think Urx? that gets you what do you think about the excitement of combat it's nothing I'm interested in for certain. Don't we have some text that I could uh, re-illuminate or something? All in good time. Really? I found a new purple color for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so now what, guys? Uh, Julian, I'm kind of hurting if you want to lead the way now. You I could mean, take a short rest. Too. You guys can take a short rest after the significant combat if you'd like. But remember, you're only going to get three short rests between long rests. And I, I don't think everyone was here. I'm going to – I talked to Steve about how confusing it is to explain the short rests. So instead of it being one, two, or three that you choose, you get three short rests between every long rest, and you get two checks in every short, re in every, uh, short rest that you use, uh, plus your con modifier. Make sense? Yeah, so I'm at 5 out of 10. What are you at, C-Count? 
I'm at four out of ten. So, so basically, and, and only only characters that are actually healing have to use the short rest, right? Like yeah, everybody. You don't have to. Yeah, if you don't, you don't have to use one of your uh, checks if you don't want to. But okay. like, if you use the class ability or anything like that, you may want to because there's multiple things you can get with the short rest. Yeah. So I would like to to take a short rest and see if I yeah. Can so just take uh, two willpower checks. To willpower to do no to do no you get nothing all right so see you what you can do you can either get your re adaptable back because that's one use of your ability right a class ability you can get a reroll pool back or you can get half of your hit points plus con back i'll go with the hit points all right and if you since you got a great success i'll give you another plus one that'll get me back to max all right there you go so just mark on your sheets that you guys took a used one of your short rests. Now what? Well, we continue south, I think. Yep. All right. As you move forward, you can see there's those arches that uh, the skeletal figure shambled through, and then beyond that, a raised uh, dais. Uh, that can be reached by staircases to either side of the chamber. And uh, there's two sarcophagi on them. Um, and these diagonals right here, the whole area uh, like of this lower part has uh, bass relief imagery on it. And uh, these uh, end here uh, uh, with the large faces of uh, taking up that whole area that's probably you know, five or six feet wide uh, with large uh, cobra mouths of uh, snakes and the mouths are open and there's actually holes there. And that is right here. Yep. And there's more um, uh, of this bass relief iconography on that curved area right there in front of the uh, on the lower portion of the day is well Eric, you want to have a look at those do your thing uh, you're, are you talking about me though or you want Erks to just shine the light in steady things I don't know you're supposed to illuminate things right <laughs> so you guys are trying to course uh irks into looking at stuff um is it anyone else makes sense isn't he an expert on the subject uh he's a scribe i wouldn't say he's an expert what uh what are the rest of you guys gonna do and you are said these, that, uh like sarcophagi yep And the snake mouth bass reliefs have holes, you said. Yeah, where the mouths are. Okay, so I ask Erks to shine the light of the lantern into the holes, and, and I'm going to keep my distance. I'm not, like, sticking my face up against it or anything, but see as much as I can see down its depths. Uh, it looks like the hole goes back maybe a foot and then angles up in both of them, like a circular hole. All right. I mentioned everybody, this looks like a trap here. This is going to release something on us if we're not careful. All right. So yeah, Irks, you have him up on top. So that's a raised day is up there. You put Irks on top. That's what he's looking at is the sarcophagus up there. Uh, I was just trying to get him into where we can see the room. Oh, okay. But I mean, yeah. So, uh, what do you, is there? What else do you guys want to do? I mean, he's looking around. He's like, hey, just these bays reliefs. Uh, it seems that they're showing someone likely, uh, likely this uh, Arif Asamo uh, uh, seems to be feeding on other people. So maybe it isn't sin that he eats, but. His enemies and friends Sinners. and friends. 
Perhaps that's no, why he was banished. And there's no obvious other uh, exits right here, right? Uh, no. We come to an end, essentially. Mm -hmm. What's the ceiling like in here? Uh, I think it's going to be uh, goes to the points on the sides, like one of the other chambers do, but a dome over the circular portion. Any kind of um, like painting or design on the dome portion? Uh, are you, are you, do you guys want to make a detection check to look around? You don't really see anything on the, like, I think it was just kind of like maybe has support stone supports like beams going up, but the light can definitely go to the ceiling. Uh, so there might be some cobwebs up there, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, like I said, there's like, there is a corpse. Uh, it looks like a four legged corpse, probably one of those like wolf lizards that you saw laying nearby, but it was not animated for whatever reason. Um, and there are like some blood staining around here. Like there was some sort of fight and there's still bits of bone and, um, uh, not brash, brass armor lying about. Any shields? No shields. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. And going back and looking up at all the skeletons, we don't find any skeleton that appears to have any key of any sort. Uh, no, you didn't. You don't find they don't have any pouches or anything like that that survived. They just had like remnants of armor and their kopeshes, and that's it. Yep. Are we wanting to open these sarcophagi? And... Well, my concern is that with these open snake mouths, is that if we do things that trigger a trap, it's going to either release something on us, like a like snakes or maybe poison gas or something given that these are snake mouths how big are those holes like arm fit them yeah yeah probably you know like maybe six inches maybe four or five inches four to six inches across radius is that what that is, is that diameter diameter yeah um how and how like high up are they um probably about five feet the holes are hmm. how many of them are there one on each side of these diagonals here okay uh what if we grab some of these uh the limbs of these uh slain ones and stuff them in there to kind of jam it up okay Try yeah that. All right, so Seaghelm, are you using like the skeleton or the portions yeah. of the meaty portions of the lizard still, or whatever you can? Um, yes, if, if I can get a good portion of like the lizard tail or something, so that you know, I'm thinking if it's a gas, I want it to be something that's thick enough that'll kind of clog it. All right, nice. Why don't you? Uh, I think if you take enough time, you're going to clog it the best that you can. We won't even make a roll, okay? Okay. Yeah, I'll take a minute to do that. All right. Uh, what's anybody else doing? So far, only Irx has really looked really hard at anything other than oh. the uh, the snake bass reliefs. And they're like steps on either side? Yep. So I'll go up to the one on the left and just examine the sarcophagus and see if I can notice any signs of a trap look for uh, pressure plates or anything around it. All right. So uh, Emery, it takes some time uh, to go exploring up there. What's Shand doing during all this? Does he want to look at anything? He's curious. So the, when, when we stuffed the lizard arm in the mouth, um, Did we do both of them? I'm assuming you did both, yeah. Okay. okay. If we pull it back out again, uh, is anything missing? Is it still intact? Uh, yeah, it maybe leaves like a bit of a icker and, you know, some okay. some flensed flesh or something. Okay, but it, it's not like an orb of devouring or anything. Nope. Or it's not chewing on it, which nope. is, which is uh, okay. Nope, it just looks some kind of like a... Maybe a ventilation shaft or something, maybe. 
Okay. Are you are you inspecting the shaft again. itself? You want to inspect the shaft shaft itself? You want to make a detection roll or anything? Yeah, sure. I can, I can well. inspect. Right. I, I'll inspect your. I'll I'll try to detect your shaft. All right. So while he's doing that, is Julian doing anything or just keeping watch? Uh, do we have any like firewood or are we do, just torches at this point? Uh, probably just torches. I mean, you could probably okay. chop down a tree upstairs if you wanted to. Hmm. Uh, no, I'm just going to hang out and try to, you know, keep watch and listen if anything's coming. All right. A great success. So I think you, um, you spot that the area right around the hole, which was difficult to see. It looks like it kind of has, uh, like black. It has like some kind of black dust on it. And when you touch it, it moves it away and you realize that it looks like it's soot and you mm. kind of notice a smell, an acrid smell of like some sort of propellant, like uh, um, lamp oil or something. You know, that makes sense too. Cause I remember earlier in the session, you mentioned that we had a, a sort of charred scent or a char and there was a, there was the v verbiage charred verbiage earlier mm -hmm. in the, uh, yep. So this is probably it, where it, it came from. Of flames so that were yeah, yeah, and there's also along the bottom of the, where the dais goes into the floor. It looks like uh, it's unlevel around a portion of the dais, like there must be something there, and a bunch of blood has kind of like pooled along that area. So we'll stay away from that area. <laughs> I think we're doing the right thing, kind of trying to club the, trying to uh, clog those up then. It may it may backfire. It may have uh, rotten. We may have rotten flesh barbecue. Uh, we but, just uh, we just killed that creature. It's not rotten. I thought it was undead. It was. It is. Oh, rotten. okay. Yeah. So I should also say that pooled as in like there's some a, more like there could be some sort of doorway there, and the blood has kind of filtered down to signify that there's like a break in the stone. It's, so it's not okay. flush stone on the ground. There's like an opening or something that the blood has kind of like seeped down or m pooled in that area to signify that there's likely some sort of opening there. If you just figured out how to open it. Hmm. All right, Emery, you don't spot any, there's no shifting stones up there. And, uh, it looks like the, the sarcophagi are unusually blank and free of engravings or base reliefs or any of this iconography that you've seen thus far in the, uh, in the tomb. And the, the lids look like they're like Intact. on their secure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Shan, did you tell me about this pooling blood that's going on down there? That's you, Taylor. I will, I will bring it up. <laughs> You'll was, mention it? Yep. Okay. Is there soot on all of the little mouths? Or just a, or just one or two of them? Both of them. Both of them? Okay. Yeah, there's only two there. Only two. Okay. Got it. So I'll step back down hearing about this, and I will inspect where it appears like this uh, blood is pooling. I'll add to it by pouring a little bit of water out of my, my water skin and seeing if it also seems to drain. Yeah, there definitely seems like uh, there's some sort of something here, like uh, it's moving in a way that it wouldn't naturally. It definitely signifying that there's like an opening of some sort or it's going down or something. Okay, I'll take my thieves tools and sort of take the pick and start to... See if I can scrape at what appears to be the uh, border between maybe a, a, a secret door or something or a trap door. Yeah, uh, it definitely looks like after you spend some more time here, it looks like similarly to the other things, there must be some sort of catch on this wall here that uh, opens it. And it looks like the this portion of the day is actually shh. Uh, opens in some way 
shape or form. And there must be like a descent on the other side, a slope or a stairwell or a hole or something. I think that you're also going to see remnants of uh, soot along, along this curved area. And it's going to smell like something was burnt here. Okay. So I'll see if I can find any other evidence of uh, like a pressure plate here that might signify a trap. Uh, it looks like what you found is... Um one part of the bass relief where this, where Irks had mentioned that uh, it, like the iconography is talking about eating sin um, shifts like uh, the click did on the altar above. Looks the like obelisk. it moves. Yeah. It looks like it moves more than one way than the other, but you're pretty certain the way you're supposed to move it to open it. But it's possible knowing what you have uh, deciphered thus far, if you moved it the wrong way, it could set off the trap as opposed to opening the door. Okay. I will tell everybody to go back into the corridor and I'm going to try to open it. All right, you're pretty sure which way it should go. Yeah, even so. I'll say just to be safe, go back in the corridor. Okay. So everyone moves back and you move it. Unfortunately, you rolled a... a total failure on which way you're supposed to do it when you are searching for traps. So you shift it and you can kind of hear something click and then there's a strong odor and you can just hear kind of like a roar of flame that is mostly choked off by all the stuff that you stuffed in the holes. Otherwise you're positive. It would have been this massive bulge, uh, belch of flame would have engulfed the whole area in the front of this. All right. Um, Cool, we've eliminated the trap direction. That's right. <laughs> um, I wasn't deciding if I was going to give you advantage on the luck save, but what I think I'm going to do is you guys worked hard enough at it that it basically it just kind of belches out some flames that shoot out, and you can see driblets of this uh, like oil and stuff that just kind of drips to the bottom, and flames are just kind of erupting around as they drop to the floor below. Uh, and then you're like, ah, good thing. Push it the other way and the door opens and a, there's a, a s stairwell leading down. Peculiar. You'd think if this was a tomb, whatever was buried here would be in the sarcophagi here. But perhaps there is a deeper tomb with deeper meaning. There's always a deeper tomb. Why don't you check the sarcophagi? There might be something buried in them. Yeah, before we descend down, we could throw these uh, lids and see if there's anything of value in them. All right, nice. I like yeah, it. Yeah, like a shield. <laughs> Could be. All right, so you... Um... Uh, is are you, you've already kind of searched that area, so you don't believe there's any traps there, Emery. Uh, so is uh, Seagal going to put his uh, Varnori muscles to the task and like open up one of them? Yeah, start with the if one on the right. If they're going to do that before they do that, I'm going to move up here. I'm like, I don't think the the sarcophagi are worth anything. I'm just going to move back up here. Okay. So apparently Emery doesn't feel like uh, they have any value, but inside you uh, recognize two human skeletons. Well, the one on the right has a female skeleton. You can tell by the width of the uh, pelvis. And uh, it does have uh, beaten bronze jewelry that it's wearing. Like you can see like a bangle bracelet and like some sort of neck dress in a uh, like a tiara. Yeah, I'll loot the treasure. Nice. All right, so uh, when you grab it, you can just kind of feel like a fluttering in your heart as something baleful seems to have entered you. All right, so let's see. So this game uses madness as a... Uh, and you think that it, maybe you have been cursed 
but uh, the strength of the curse is uh, not as strong as it could be. But there's still an opportunity for you to be maddened. All right, let's see how this works. Madness usually begins at the minor severity level. Some things are so shocking or curses so bad that they cause madness. So usually a luck will save is permitted to resist. Luck will save. Luck will save. Ooh, success. So the fluttering of your heart eases and at, for a moment there, you almost had a, a ravenous a need to eat. And you wondered what could taste the best. Well, I haven't eaten since, you know, the camp, so. But this time it seems that mm, Julian looks strangely tasty. I wonder, I wonder what human flesh tastes like. All right, but the the treasure does seem to be valuable, but it does seem to have some kind of baleful curse attached to it. You think it could uh, maybe pull a hundred gold pieces in the in uh, almost anywhere? Yeah, I'm definitely not putting it on, but I will keep it in my backpack. All right, do you open up the other one as well? Yeah, I'm assuming you did both. Uh, this unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the male that was here was a warrior, for he was not buried with a shield. Uh, no luck for you there, Julian. Sorry, buddy. But you do find a uh, hundred gold pieces worth of cursed bronze jewelry. Gotcha. And um, well, I mean, I'm going to advertise it as cursed. Right. Let me sell it. I, I, I like the way C. Helm thinks. Is anyone else? going to check out this jewelry that he had. <laughs> Did he mention the feeling or was there just like a pale? Uh... No, I didn't say anything about that. Nice. I like I it. Maybe I just, you know, licked my chops for a moment and, yeah, you know, <laughs> shook it off. No worries. All right. Perfect. So it's 1013. I think we'll wait for the next level next session next Tuesday, hopefully. Is that going to work for everybody? Yeah, uh, I'm out know. next week. I'm okay. out of town the whole week. Perfect. That seems like uh Maybe he's still thinking about eating the other party members. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's possible that Elliot might be back, but maybe not. We'll, we probably still have three people, though, it sounds like. Let's shift over to uh, the chat room here. And uh, does anyone, is this anyone's fourth? Or what session is this for you, Taylor? It was my fourth. Okay, that's right. So you already got your... Well, we already let you go up a level. Um, and Zach, you got your advancement last session. My third. I third. got uh, got advancements, but I rolled nothing. Okay. And uh, the, same for, the same for you, Arlen, right? This is your second session. And we rolled for you, but you didn't get anything. All right, perfect. So uh, does anybody have any highs or lows? Well, I guess I'll just go one by one. Taylor, is there anything you wanted to say about the session? Yep. Yep. I thought I, uh, in, although I, I do enjoy being the uh, br uh, brunt of sleepy jokes now that we lost Hawk, but that's okay. I felt I, I felt like I did better uh, paying attention. I realized I was, I was trying to cover up because I knew I was yawning a bit, but um I felt like I was able to follow this time. So I'm happy. I'm pleased with me. <laughs> nice. Well, good work, sir. What about you, Alan? Um, highs and lows. Let's see. I felt like Julian was very competent in combat. We've that seen is, that yeah. both from his ranged and, and in melee. Smacked a lot of bad guys. But on the other hand, we did not get to kill a two-headed snake. It's a little disappointing because mm, you, know. you missed that man. You missed it. Yeah. You guys could have tried to like lure that one out to kill it. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Uh, what about you, Robert? Uh, we're descending into a tomb. I think that's the high point. I, I enjoy the the change of pace. Yeah, we did some wilderness exploration, and now it's time for the dungeon. Zach, right? Uh, well, I'm glad that stuffing dead lizard parts into the cobra mouth saved our buddy there from getting nuked. 
<laughs> yeah, was... that that was a nasty uh, a nasty trap that you definitely did. I, I I like the madness aspect of it because it's like a, just one more way that you can kind of attack the character sheet um, with the in the game. But unfortunately, no madness. But perhaps in another area of the tomb. Uh, I like the tomb tra- uh, traps and stuff, and you guys definitely uh, moved through those quite well. I would compare it to the uh, uh, OSE game that we played earlier this week and how the players didn't necessarily traverse the traps as well and half the party was killed. But, um, yeah, good job, guys. I I, I enjoyed that. And I, and I really appreciate you guys doing a little uh, play test of this adventure that I will likely publish in the future. Uh, one more time, I see there's some different people in the chat. If you talk in the chat, you will get uh, – every time you talk in the chat, you'll get an entry into win this class toolkit compendium from Goblin Scribe Gaming. It gives you some extra character types and kits to uh, increase the usability of the characters in the core game. Other than that, uh, anyone have any last words? I'm, I'm picturing in my mind's eye, Hobbs in his notebook has got give Julian a cursed shield circled. And <laughs> he knows I'm going to take it as soon as I see a shield. So he's like, yeah, just put a curse on that bad boy. Mess with him. Oh, nice. Uh, wait a second. Let me write this down quick. No, just kidding. All right, so let us leave to the dulcet tones of T.J. Drennan. Since we didn't get into the at the beginning of the session, we will get to hear it at the end. It's a beautiful day in the game of hell, a beautiful day for my gamers. Would you be one? Could you be one? It's out of that fun, but don't despair. This colony's breeding great robbers. Would you be one? Could you be one? If the native percent mortality rate works for you For a few bucks a month you can sign up and have the hogs kill you So let's make the most of another someday Brew up some coffee and play it my way Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my gamers? Won't you be? Won't you please? Please won't you be my gamers? Bye!